In this video, you'll learn to manage the browser like a pro. The FL Studio browser is where you drag in samples amongst many other things. And I don't think it often gets the respect it deserves. So let's check it out. Please like and subscribe. So the FL Studio browser is going to be this here on the left-hand side. This is generally how it defaults. You can hide it by right-clicking and right-clicking again to bring it back out. Before we go on to the drop-down and all these other options, you'll see some notable things. We got current project, which is going to have your history in case you don't want to control Z a million times. We also have recent files, which is a bunch of recent files. It's exactly what it sounds like. Our plugin database, these lists, effects, and generators is going to be these here. So generators, I have instruments, generators, instruments. This is also going to dictate the organization of your plugins in FL Studio. You'll see I've got analyzers, analyzers here, controllers, controllers here, delay, delay, so on and so forth, keeping all my plugins organized. In order to get this kind of organization, you just need to make sure that your plugins have stars to the left of them for all the ones you want showing up in these lists. After they're in these lists, right click, open. It'll open the folders that all of these are in. And then you can rename the folders and you can drag all of these around to wherever you want, creating an organized FL Studio list. After plugin database, we have plugin presets, which is where a lot of these FL Studio presets are going to be saved. I want you to notice though that my presets for other plugins are not saved here. My CLA 76 has a lot more presets than just this one. That's from another video. Any presets I do make myself though will be saved here. At least if I save them within FL Studio, sometimes saving in the actual plugins interface will keep it from being saved in this location. Again, effects is for mixer track, generators for anything that'll be in our channel rack, instrument type plugins. Channel presets will drag in different preset types for entire channels like this. So 3X oscillator, it'll drag in with all of its own preset settings as well as a specific 3X oscillator preset. Mixer presets is gonna be preloaded effects. If we come here and I right click, file, drop down. You can also see YouTube vocal. That is the vocal chain that I am using here. You can save these by going file, save mixer track state as, and then it'll end up in this list. Scores is information that is going to be used by different FL Studio options like the arpeggiator and more. Backup is where all of our backups will be. Clipboard files, demo projects, envelopes, I'll share data, and miscellaneous will not be that important. However, impulse is here is pretty cool. This is where all of the impulse files are going to be for the convolution reverb, the fruity convolver. And if you download impulse files off the internet, you can actually drop them into these folders. And you can find these folder locations by right clicking and clicking open. We have my projects, which is going to be the projects that are saved in the default FL Studio location. Anything saved outside that location will not appear here. Project Bones is a type of exporting for FL Studio files where you can export or import parts of different projects. I'll have a video on that above. We've got Packs, which is where all of the default FL Studio sounds are at. Way back before, I dragged all my samples into this area in my packs. However, there is a easier way to do this by going to Options, File Settings, and then anything in these folders here that you set or select will be folders that are accessible in the browser, which is a great way to have all of your samples organized and set to one location and then loaded into FL Studio. As you can see here, I have a splice option with the name splice folder, which appears here. I also have splice samples and samples the last thing here. There's no browser name, so that shows up as samples at this location here. Next, we have recorded, which will be well, any of the files saved to the default FL Studio location for files that you have recorded. We also have a section for rendered files as well. So this is going to be anything that's been consolidated or any time that you've gone to a mixer track, armed it, and clicked Alt-R to render what's going through that mixer track throughout the entire timeline of your project that is in your playlist. We'll also have sliced audio, which is anything that you have loaded into a sampler 
uh, like Fruity Slicer or SliceX. And sound fonts, which is old school, and they just recently brought back the sound font player. They did it on the last update so that people can use their old school samples and sounds and load them into a up-to-date, more compatible sound font player. Now we've got three options at the top. Cycling these will show us these same exact options that we've already looked at. We've got current project, which is all of this that'll show us anything that is actually loaded into our project. We have plugin database, which is going to show us our plugin database, which is right here. And these are just more consolidated sections in the browser. We also have some fast tabs that you can set up. So for example, bases, I have a set so it opens up to my bases. MIDI, vocals, I have it set to open up to MIDI and vocals, melodies, and then the original two, which is all, which is how everything starts out, current project, and plugin databases. So we can search through these folders by using Smart Find. If I go here and I click clap, it's going to pull up the very first thing in the list with the word clap. Now that we've searched that, we can F3 to jump to the next things with the word clap in it. And as you can see, that is such an inclusive word that almost every folder is getting stopped by. I just barely made it to some miscellaneous folders, not even my actual project folders. Now to get by that struggle, what we can do is we can go to, for example, packs here. I can go to my packs. Now that this folder is selected, I can click shift F and I can now search within this folder. Whereas if I did smart find, which is control F, it'd take me back to the top. There is also regular find, which is alt F. And regular find is going to look for things that are exactly that word. Whereas smart find allows what FL Studio calls advanced search functions, which would be like using a star to finish a word. As you can see, now I have clap as an option. I have clipboard as an option. It's trying to find things close to that word. Whereas if I searched for CLP with no star, we're not going to get quite the same results. Now, this smart find, along with these other two options here, are going to be in this drop down. As you can see, we have find, smart find, smart find in selected folder which are all the ones we just chose, find previous, find next, which we did by clicking F2, F3. We also have navigation history, previous and next. So if I go previous by clicking backspace, we'll go through a bunch of stuff there that we've already previously been through. And if I go next by going shift backspace, I will work my way forward. We can also send previous or send next to selected channel. And so what that'll do is is this samples before this samples after this one i have this channel selected so if i have that selected there i can send previous channel and now we have which is the one that was previous. Now that we have this selected, we can do send next to select a channel. And now it'll be the one after. Next option in here, we've got size, where we can just choose the different viewing sizes that we have in here. Depending on the way your FL Studio scales, you might need to change this, maybe not. We have auto hide, which I generally like to keep on. I just keep off for some tutorials, which automatically hides the browser. We have show only one folder content, which makes it so if I open another folder, it closes the previous one. This can help from keeping things becoming a mess, but personally, I like having that off. 
we have show only open folders. And if you'll see now when we're looking at this, uh, any folder that wasn't open is gone. I don't know why miscellaneous stayed. We've got show folder icons, which you can see what happened when I changed that. Now all the icons that were next to these folders have disappeared. I can bring them back by clicking it again. We also have show images. If we go to the plugin database, you can see we have icons here. If I turn show images off, those little thumbnails will uh, disappear. We also have a show file extensions option. So if I go back to my samples, a lot of these should say wave. Yep, dot wave. And show unknown file types shows file types that aren't recognized by FL Studio. We can sort by different ways. We can sort by name, type, and date. We also have a group option, which I am unsure of how this specifically works. We have collapse structure, which will collapse everything and close all the folders you were in. There's also a button up here for that. Reread structure is going to reread the contents. So this is pretty much like refreshing. Now, in order to set the things that I set here and showed you. You got current snapshot. See all these here? All you have to do is set this however you want it. And then you're going to go to rename slash color. Um, I'll show you if I go snap nine. So snap nine's the one I want to work over. I go to cores or scores and I open these. I'm going to click this drop down, rename and recolor it to test. Click enter. And now I also want it frozen because I don't want it to be edited or changed so easily later. And then I can jump back to it. I've noticed frozen doesn't always work. Like if I change this really quick and I go MIDI vocals and I go back to my test, um, some of these things that I changed, when I go back, will still be all ridiculous. If you click collapse structure though, collapse structure will take you back to what was supposed to be set to. Now, next thing is we have configure extra folders. If we open that up, who knew? It opened up the thing I showed you before for adding extra folders. Uh, there's some cool options in here though. If you're interested in learning about the files and folders section, Click above. And then we also have refresh plugin list, fast scan, which is like coming in here. And last but not least, if we right click, we'll see some options. Expand all and collapse all. Expand all is kind of ridiculous, as you can see. And then we also have collapse all, as well as manage plugins, which will open our plugin manager. Window shell menu, which is, a, which is like if you right click a folder or file in Windows itself, and open, which will open the folder. If we go to a sample itself, we'll see a few other options. We have open a new sampler channel, which is the basic sampler channel you get when you drag these in. Fruity granulizer, which is pretty cool. That's a nice sampler if you want to play around with the sound. Fruity slicer, which is really nitty gritty basic for flipping samples and SliceX, which is a powerhouse and can be kind of complicated. If you want to view tutorials on that, check it out above. We also have Edit and Audio Editor, which is going to be Edison, unless you change it via the file settings video I told you about earlier by using this down here. We also have Edit and Pitch Corrector, which is going to open New Tone, and Time Warper, which is going to open New Time. We can send it to a selected channel or focused plugin, which is just going to be anything that, of course, is selected or focused, as well as just open a new channel, which will do the exact same thing as open a new sampler channel. There's some other options available if you right click different types of data files. So if you see something, right click it, see what's available to you, might see something cool. And if you ever want to find a sound, all you have to do is take that sound or sample, drag it into the browser, and it'll show you exactly the folder and where that is at. Now, the browser holds a lot, 
But pretty much, we have a bunch of cool content folders, a drop-down menu with some cool options, a few ways to organize and jump around quickly, as well as some other cool options. If you're interested, timestamps below. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio and adios.